Hi, I'm Dennis. And in this video, I will show you how I made this seahorse out of maple and transparent epoxy resin with a little seahorse made out of blue epoxy resin inside. About two years ago, I carved my very first 3D CNC project. I thought it was time to make a new version. I downloaded one of the many 3D seahorses that are available for free on the internet and made a copy which I smoothened to remove all the sharp spikes and other protrusions. By overlaying the original, you can see the differences. I plan to make the dark parts out of maple and the internal light part out of transparent epoxy resembling sparkling water. And since almost everything would be transparent, I decided to make a little seahorse inside with dark blue epoxy resin. This meant that I had to cut everything into a right and left half for practical reasons. So for each half I needed to design three toolpath series in V-Carve. First the pocket of the smoothened seahorse for the clear epoxy fill. Then after the clear epoxy had hardened a pocket for the small seahorse to fill with blue epoxy. And finally the inside for some small details and dowel holes for the alignment as well as the outside with an anchor attached to the tail. The left side was identical to the right, but then with everything mirrored. For this project I'll be using 5 bits. A 1 1 8 surfacing bit, a quarter inch upcut end mill, a quarter inch downcut end mill, a 1 8 tapered ball nose bit and a 1 16 tapered ball nose bit. I had already purchased this big slab of maple a while ago, so enough talk. Let's get started! I will reuse the spoil board that I had used for the Xenomorph Alien and the T-Rex skeleton as there's plenty of good surface left for this project. Since the wood of the seahorse is less than 1mm thick at certain places, the accuracy of the depth is very important. So I will resurface this spoil board so that it's perfectly flat relative to the router. But with such heavy stock, the CNC bed that I made out of two layers of half an inch MDF board each may sag under the weight of this big board. So I got the support strut that tightly fitted underneath the center of the CNC bed. If the CNC bed is now slightly bulging because of the support strut, resurfacing the spoil board will take care of that and make everything perfectly level relative to the router. I secured the spoil board at the corners onto the CNC bed and used a 1 1 8 inch bit for resurfacing. This big board of maple is practically flat. But for this particular project, it also needs to be uniform in thickness. So I'll pass it through the planer until it's exactly 50 millimeters from one end to another. This piece of stock is too short to simply cut it in half and I carve each side of the seahorse out of one half. But with some smart nesting, I can fit both sides of the seahorse on this whole piece of stock. However, this requires the stock to stick out of the CNC, which means I cannot clamp it on this side to prevent it from sliding in this direction when a bit is digging into the wood. But a couple of dowels will keep it securely in place, so I'll drill those dowel holes first. I first used a downcut bit to drill the dowel holes into the spoil board. Then positioned the center of the stock at the X and Y zero coordinates of the router with the V bit. and clamped it down. I used an upcut bit for the dowel holes in the stock, after which I removed the stock to insert the dowels into the spoil board, flip the stock upside down and secure it in place. I then drilled the dowel holes into the stock for later on when carving the other side and started the roughing pass of the inside of the seahorse using the same quarter inch upcut bit. After the roughing was done, I swapped the end mill for a 1 8 tapered ball nose bit for the finishing pass. The first round of CNC of the right half is done, so now I can fill this pocket with epoxy resin. This deep pocket requires quite a bit of epoxy resin, 
but such a large volume of epoxy would become very hot and bubbly during the curing process. So I'll fill this pocket one cup at a time. I filled half a cup of part B, added half a cup of part A and mixed it well. I carefully poured it into the pocket and let it solidify. I needed a total of 4 cups to fill it to the rim. I will let this fully harden for 2 days before the next round of CNC. After 2 days the epoxy has fully cured, so let's bring it back to the shed. A closer look shows that the epoxy surface is not exactly level, which means that the stock was slightly tilted when casting the epoxy. But this should be no problem, as the whole surface will be evened out with the final round of CNC. The process was practically the same as for the big pocket, except that I didn't need to drill new dowel holes and that I used a ball nose bit with a smaller tip. First a roughing pass with a quarter inch upcut bit, followed by a finishing pass with a 1 16th tapered ball nose bit. Now let's fill this pocket with some colored epoxy resin. I made a small batch of epoxy. And mixed in a scoop of duo blue green mica powder from Pearl X. I poured it in the center of the small pocket and allowed it to run into the head and tail until it was about to overflow. I then popped the bubbles with the heat gun. And now we have to wait another two days. The right side is ready for the final round of CNC. As before, I used a quarter inch end mill for the roughing pass of the right inside. And then a 1 8 tapered ball nose bit for the finishing pass. I drilled two dowel holes in the seahorse for alignment when attaching the left side later on. I then flipped the stock to carve the other side. First the roughing pass of the outside. And finally the finishing pass of the outside. I carefully cut the tabs with a fine saw. I left the stubs of the tabs on to help with the alignment when clamping the other side later on. But first, I need to carve that left side. The entire process of the left half is practically the same, except that everything is mirrored. After drilling some dowel holes, I first did the roughing pass and then the finishing pass for the epoxy pocket. I filled it with 4 cups of clear epoxy resin and let it harden for 2 days. Then did the roughing pass, followed by the finishing pass for the internal seahorse. I filled that with blue epoxy and let it cure for 2 days. Then continued with the roughing pass of the inside the finishing of the inside, the dowel holes, the roughing of the outside, and finally the finishing pass of the outside, of the left side. I will use epoxy resin to glue the left and right halves together, as any other fixative will be clearly visible through the transparent epoxy. I roughened the surface with fine sanding paper for better adhesion of the epoxy, and cleaned the dust from the surface with a dry, natural sponge. I inserted short dowels, 
and made a small batch of epoxy resin, which I spread in a thin coat on both halves. I then positioned the right onto the left side and clamped them together to squeeze out air bubbles. Strips of rubber protected the clamps from the epoxy dripping out. While this epoxy is curing, I'll start working on the pedestal. I had saved this big chunk of epoxy resin that had hardened in a bucket before I could use it for another project. I'll use this for the pedestal and carve something on top that looks like a wave or a seashell. I also found this small leftover board that I'll shape to fit the epoxy pedestal. I drilled four holes into the board that matched the position of the clamping holes. I secured it together with a piece of spoy board onto the CNC bed. Then created the pocket in the center and cut it out with a slightly rounded beveled edge. After that, I secured the cylindrical chunk of epoxy with duct tape to hold it down onto the CNC bed and clamps to prevent it from sliding horizontally. I did the roughing and finishing passes and created a pocket for the anchor on the tail of the seahorse. After some manual cleanup, I glued the epoxy part into the wooden part with liquid nails from Fusit. This needs a day or so to harden, so let's check out how the seahorse is doing. I need to do some manual cleanup and make this anchor fit into the center hole in the pedestal. I used the Dremel and some sanding paper to carefully remove any excess epoxy that had squeezed out and to smoothen the anchor for a tight fit into the pedestal. A small drop of liquid nails should be enough to hold them together. I decided to coat the entire statue with epoxy for the best transparency and to make the small blue seahorse inside clearly visible. Any hanging drops will also create the illusion that the statue is still wet, as if the seahorse just emerged from the water. So that's it, thank you for watching.